All right, so this time. This is it, man. This is it. This is it. We've been out here since seven this morning. <laughs> hey, good morning, church. Hey, good morning, church. Here we are, Palm Sunday, Sunday. That's right. It's no nothing says Palm Sunday like... Visiting your town green. So we are visiting our town green today because most... Palm Sunday celebrations <laughs> happen in Old Saybrook on the green. Actually, none of them do. But what makes us think about landing on the green is parades. And so, like for us, here we are in our town green. It's usually packed with people on parade day. We pass the town hall, the Kate. There's our little street that would be closed down with the parade coming in. No palm branches on our parades. And then we end here with the fire station. Oop. There's Jeff being all proud, pretending he's in a parade. We missed out on the uh, torchlight parade this year. Memorial Day parade last year. But it's Palm Sunday, so we get to... Yeah, I don't know if we're going to have a more Memorial Day parade this year or not. We just could. It's not as much fun. It's fun when you got, like, the whole town there, and you get dressed up in your stuff, and you get to walk behind a fire truck. Did you fun. know that in the Midwest, Memorial Day, we don't usually do parades. We have Fourth of July parades. And out here, you can't find a Fourth of July parade to save your life. And I used to dress up with my sister Heidi as a honeybee. And we would hand out honey candy to the kids. I did not do that. You probably were the kid that was like, what? Honey candy. I'm like, don't you have a Snickers? <laughs> but there you go. There's another little tidbit you never knew about Tammy. There you go. So we have lived in Old Saybrook. This would be... Seven years? This would be the seventh time. I think we've actually had the Memorial Day Parade. I'm going to say three times. Maybe I four. But maybe three. Yeah, it's rained or... Because it rains. Last year, obviously, COVID, we didn't have it. Um, one parade, I remember Joe was in it because he was in it for band. Yep. And I think Mia was in it for... Did so she play softball? softball? Yep. yep. And it's then, exciting. And it ended up here, right? It always ends up here. We had uh, Jerry Perry yes. as the Grand Marshal come in. And we had Andy Anderson do it. And Ken. The last... And we had Ken do it. So we so had three. We for sure had three. <laughs> so I guess you have to belong to St. Paul to be in the parade. Uh, apparently. Uh, apparently. And then uh, the last two I was in with the fire department. So we, I get to walk in in my, you know, fancy Don't, schmancy uniform behind the fire truck. I'm really glad you haven't forgotten us now that you've gotten all famous being in the parade all these times. I'll leave, I'll give you a signature, an autograph <laughs> if you want. So parade Sundays, it's, it's a great Sunday. It's very easy to picture what it was like um, with Jesus coming into town, no honey candy, but we had the palms and the yelling and the hoorays and the hosannas. When the parade is on, and you imagine all those people together and just how celebratory it is. Yeah, fun. I bet you've all been to a parade. Lots of, lots of expectation about what that could be. Absolutely. That's yeah, right. I, I think great. we should get on with our day. It's just so beautiful out here. We're so happy. <laughs> I know, it's been kind of yucky. Anyway, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, but let's pray. Let's, let's do that. Uh, gracious God, we give you thanks. Uh, on this day, we celebrate your coming into Jerusalem, and we start this holiest of weeks as we remember not only your entrance into Jerusalem, but your betrayal and arrest and suffering and death, and of course, Easter that is coming. Uh, but in the meantime, today, we, we think about your entry into Jerusalem and into our lives. Be with us now and enter in. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, Jeff, why don't you just like go run along the thing and I'll just take a video of you. Go on the street. It's not a parade if it's one person. <laughs> oh, that's true. What about those towns that only have one person? <laughs> I mean, honestly, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> Happy Palm Sunday, everybody. <laughs>
now in the Lord's name coming, our King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The company of angels are praising you on high. Creation and all mortals in chorus make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The multitude of pilgrims with palms before you went, our praise and prayer and anthems before you we present. O glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring, to you before your passion they sang their hymns of praise. To you now I exalted our melody we raise. O glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring, their praises you accepted, accept the prayers we bring. Great author of all goodness, our good and gracious King, all glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Good morning again, friends. So Jeff and I were out on our walk and uh, talking about Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday equals parade. Palm Sunday equals excitement. And car after car is going by like a parade. Here I am at the Old Saybrook Middle School, our one uh, vaccination site in Old Saybrook. And what do you know? If you pan over, it is just like a parade. No candy, no mini flags, but the excitement is in the air. The promise of a new life and what is to come is definitely everywhere. So here I am on Main Street, which is our parade route in town when we do have those parades. Uh, on Memorial Day and the Torchlight Parade in December. I think about the, the fanfare of all the people that are gathered around with great excitement as it brings together not only the past uh, and those traditions, but also uh, the joy of the present and hope towards the future. And parades can be all about that. I think about, in particular, uh, the expectation that people would have had when Jesus marched in on that donkey. Um, the symbols of that they would have known from, from their scriptures. Uh, Zechariah, the prophet, who centuries before, during the time of rebuilding, after the exile in Babylon, in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, uh, would have been a contemporary, uh, writing that one day there would be freedom, that one day the king, just like King David, would march right into town on the back of an animal, with fanfare all around and shouts praising the Lord. And so when Jesus did that in the midst of foreign occupation, in the midst of Roman rule, people would have known exactly what that would have been about. After all, they had been under foreign occupation for, for centuries and they would have 
uh, longed for that promise to be fulfilled. And so the symbols of, of animal and praise and the king marching in would have been a familiar story told again and again, now being realized in their midst. It would have had some unique power in their lives. It harkens back centuries after uh, Zechariah, but still centuries before Jesus, to a person we don't know a whole lot about in our tradition, but there's a great story of, of the Maccabees, of Judas Maccabeus in particular, who was a bit of a commander, a renewer, who did uh, fight back against the foreign rule of the Greeks, who took back the temple for a time uh, to cleanse it and renew it, who fought back um, against those foreign occupiers, who was often outnumbered in battle, but would hearken back to the stories and tell people, uh, remember, God had once saved us out of slavery in Egypt. God will certainly deliver us now. Or in another battle, uh, remember King David. He led us against the Philistines, way, way outnumbered, and still delivered us. Or, or, or King Josiah once defended us against the hands of the Assyrians. And now, even though he was called the hammer, uh, and even though the hammer fell even on Judas Maccabeus, uh, that memory was alive. For Jesus to come in on that donkey, to set in motion the events of Good Friday uh, that was coming, and of course Easter, which is also on its way, uh, people, would have, people would have been on the edge uh, Jerusalem at the time was a was a, a, a full of friction and and a pressure cooker of of these forces of political power and uh, resistance and religious tension and for Jesus to enter Jerusalem he must have known what he was up against but unlike his contemporaries who thought him either to be a rebel who needed to be squashed, or, or the true king who was raising an army to, to thwart their enemies. Jesus, of course, had a different path, a different mission, as we see this week, as the story continues to unfold, where he shares that holy meal with his disciples, where he is betrayed, where he is arrested in the city park, where he suffers where he becomes the suffering servant of old, told by Isaiah and the other prophets, who lays down his life for the many, that we, that we might have life, and see the full restoration, not only of our lives in the here and now, but in the lives, our lives to come. Uh, and of course, Easter is gonna change, change everything. But the people don't know that quite yet. They're, they're gathered for the parade. They're gathered for the spectacle. They're gathered to see what God is going to do next. And our invitation for us is also to be attentive, to see what God is going to do next in our lives and in our community around us. I mean, this is a busy, bustling street uh, right about at rush hour. And isn't that where God really dwells? Not in these far off removed sanctuaries from everyday life, but in the thick of where life is happening. And we are called to see that. We are called to join that. We are called to, to bring the extension of God's mercy that comes in the form of a procession on a donkey. Uh, as we, we bring that compassion of God with us into each other's lives. So let's hear this story not only for ourselves, uh, not only because we're celebrating Holy Week, not only because we've got our palm branches and are sitting at the edge of our own seats, but also to reclaim uh, this space in, in the whole story of what God has been up to all along, bringing the people out of slavery into freedom, wherever that oppression is found, that God's people would be about life and blessing for the nations. A reading from John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. 
Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Word of God, word of life. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We know exactly what we're doing when we wave these palm branches around, when we say those words, Hosanna, when we bless his entry coming right down the city streets. The king has entered. All those years ago, they knew exactly what they were doing too waving those palm branches around, shouting Hosanna, welcoming him, coming down on that pack animal through the streets of Jerusalem. Uh, the days of uncertainty were over. The future had arrived. The kingdom of God was right before their very eyes, and they were a part of it. Why wouldn't they shout Hosanna, shout their praises, start to celebrate the kingdom's arrival? They knew exactly what they were doing that day. But I'm not telling you about that which you already probably know about today. I'm not talking about Jesus coming in on a donkey on Palm Sunday. I'm talking about Solomon, who entered Jerusalem on a mule, and the people gathered, shouting their praises, knowing that the kingdom was in good hands, that the future was before them, that the king had arrived. You see, the people had been in a civil war for some time. Uh, the many sons of David were vying for power and control. Solomon himself was the son of Bathsheba and David. Bathsheba, the one with whom David had had an affair all those years ago. After all that death and destruction of civil war and uncertainty for the future, after a time of upheaval, Adonijah, Solomon's older brother thought that the throne was going to be his. He was, after all, the next in line. He was, after all, the oldest. He had gathered with him uh, David's advisors as David was on his deathbed, uh, celebrating that the day had arrived, almost like a political rally, uh, people giving speeches and celebratory comments almost breaking out the champagne, being ready to go as the sacrifices were being made, as the fires were burning, as people were ready for certainty. Except the prophet Nathan 
had a different idea. The same prophet Nathan, who confronted David about Bathsheba all those years ago. David was on his deathbed. He came to Bathsheba and said, if you want to save your son and your own life right now, you need to go talk to David. And David blessed them both and took his son aside and blessed him and made him king. And as a sign of his kingship, Solomon rode through the city streets on a pack animal as they waved palm branches and shouted Hosanna. They knew exactly what this meant. They knew that the king had arrived. Adonijah did as well. You would think that the civil war would continue, that there would be more bloodshed, but no, at least not initially. Adonijah pretty much surrendered to Solomon. He knew that once you rode through the streets on a, on a pack animal with the shouts of Hosanna in a parade like that, that the real king had arrived. And if David had blessed Solomon for that task, there was no taking it back, that Solomon was indeed the king. And so Adonijah came to Solomon pleading for mercy. As you know, kings are often violent as they try to maintain their own power and control, and, and soon, as those stories go, Solomon did, in fact, get rid of Adonijah and his associates, solidifying his power and setting up the future. Solomon was, a, by all means, a, a pretty good king. When he was asked what he wanted by God himself, he didn't ask for power or wealth or prestige. Uh, he asked for wisdom. He asked to be a good ruler. And God, in God's mercy, gave it to him. We know the stories of Solomon. At least the, the most famous one, of course, is those two women who brought one child to Solomon, asking who was the proper mother. And in a quick battle of wits, the proper mother was established. You can read all about this in 1 Kings. Solomon expanded the nation of Israel to its widest territory. He, he gave uh, birth to powerful commerce and international trade. Um, he, because of all of the bloodshed that had predated him, ruled in, in pretty peaceful times. He even built a beautiful sanctuary, the great temple in Jerusalem, to house the Ten Commandments and make a proper place for God to dwell among them. It was the start of what could be a great kingdom. Of course, human sinfulness and brokenness that got involved. He started to look to himself rather than to God. He looked to his neighbors rather than to what was right. And soon, Solomon, unfortunately, fell into the same idolatrous paths as so many kings that would follow him, and a, a plague that it really had befallen the people through much of their history, not remembering that they were there to be a blessing to the nations, not to rule over them, that God was a God of love and mercy and salvation who rescued them out of slavery in Egypt so they could live into their vocation of loving God and loving each other and being that blessing he had called Abraham to be all those generations before. But in that moment, when Solomon rode that pack mule down the streets of Jerusalem, everybody knew the king had arrived. So when Jesus does this on Palm Sunday, it's, it's not a publicity stunt. It's not a, a, a calculated, uh, a propagandic event. It's not just meant to be pure symbolism. Because Jesus would have known exactly what he was doing. And the people who responded in the city streets with palms, with shouts of their own hosannas, by saying, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, they knew what this meant. That the descendant of David had come again. That the Messiah that they had longed for, for so many generations, had now arrived. 
that a true deliverer was among them. They, they had moments in their past, but it seemed for the last several centuries, through the Assyrians and Babylonians, through the Persians and the Greeks and the Romans, that it was always a foreign ruler, a foreign kingdom that held control. And what they longed for, among most other things, was for God to act again, for God to rescue them out of their own oppression, out of, out of their own new sense of, of slavery, not in a foreign territory, but in their own occupied land. And for Jesus to come in and ride that donkey, and for them to shout their hosannas with these branches. They believed that a new Solomon, a new David, a new Judas Maccabeus had come to bring the hammer down once again on their enemies. And so you could see their great disappointment when it was Jesus of Nazareth who showed up, who didn't come with an army, who didn't come to beset more violence against violence, who didn't come to set the prisoners free with his firm hand but who lived a mission of mercy, who spoke a word of hope, who came to set the prisoners free, but not, not those under the shackles of present-day reality, but under their own sinfulness and brokenness and wandering away from this God who never abandoned them in the first place. And so for us to shake these palm branches uh, recalls that as well. I mean, yeah, it's good to march around with them. Uh, it's, it's fun sometimes. Uh, one thing I like to do with these palm branches is save them, uh, and then the following year to burn them, and they become the ashes for Ash Wednesday, so that one year leads to the next, and we're back in the cycle of knowing who it is we are, and how God continues uh, to claim us, not for comfort, not just to live in this home, but for that same mission of mercy that Jesus has called us to be a part of. I mean, yeah, it is to set the prisoners free. It is to reach out to the oppressed. It is to, to, to be the hands of, of mercy and hope and love and compassion to those who have been left behind but not through acts of violence, not through our own power or wealth or prestige, not even by our own great creative ingenuity, but by the grace of God. So this day, uh, like those who have come before us, we make a transition uh, because, uh, well, what happened to Solomon? After he died, the kingdom fell apart. Uh, it split into two. It was, it was never quite the same after that, and it took centuries, almost a millennia, for Christ to come. And in Jesus' own time and in Jesus' own procession down those Jerusalem streets, his enemies came against him. Those who shouted, Hosanna, turned away, and even his friends betrayed him out of fear. And quickly, that kingdom came. Again, not with power and might, not in the ways we would imagine uh, to drive those Romans out and finally give them what they deserved. That he toppled the powers of heaven and earth, the powers of sin and destruction and even the powers of death by he himself being betrayed and denied and arrested and suffering that horrible passion for the sake of the world, for the sake of you and me, for the sake of all those who are, are oppressed in any way, shape, or form, in any time, in any place. Christ's mission has a far grander vision than just release from one political entity or another. It is a release from all the powers of this world that try to drive us under their thumb and make us submit, instead of proclaiming the Lord of Lords, and the King of Kings, 
as the heavenly hosts proclaim. And soon, of course, Easter is coming, but first we must traverse these days that are ahead of us to witness his betrayal and death, to agonize him, to be with him through his betrayal and arrest, to dine with him at that last supper, to feel the sense of abandonment that so many of us have experienced in our own time of exile across this past year, and to witness once again the power of death ultimately being crushed underfoot. Easter is coming. It is a week away. I look forward to gathering, uh, whether it's online in this way or in one of our in-person options of, of being able to, to proclaim Christ is risen indeed in a renewed sense of, of coming out of that time of exile that we've all experienced over the course of these last weeks and months. Uh, but first we wave these branches. First we shout, here comes the king. And we know exactly what this king brings. Rescue. Salvation. Renewal. A kingdom unlike any other. But not a kingdom of this world but a kingdom that will transform the world by first transforming you and me. Peace be with you. Hosanna cry, O Savior, make your road pursue with palms and scattered garments strewed. Ride on, ride on in majesty. In Please join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, we give you thanks for this time to be together, for the renewal that is all around us, and yet for all the heartache and suffering that still remains, for the grief that remains, for the anxiety that remains, for the worry that remains. We pray that you would enter in, just like you entered into Jerusalem all those years ago, uh, right into the midst of those places uh, with your love and compassion, uh, especially for those among our, our family and our friends and our neighbors who are in the midst of, of dealing with the hidden things that are not quite so out in the open. And we give you thanks that there is hope among us, hope of vaccinations, hope of healing, hope of things opening once more. Help us not to rush into them too quickly, but to uh, be wise and make good decisions as we join with one another again and with uh, the activities that we've longed so far, uh, so, for so long, uh, to be a part of once more. Uh, thank you for this spring that is upon us for the plants that are pushing out of the ground and bringing forth new life, for the birds singing and even the bugs that uh, make noise and bite and fly and, and do their creepy crawly things. And the signs of life among us are here again. The sun is at a different angle up in our sky, bringing warmth and light, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the generosity and compassion around us that we see and that we long for and that you invite us into time and time again. Help us to be those hands and feet of compassion around us as you would dwell within us and, and give us that strength and courage uh, to do your will uh, in the world, wherever it is we are. We come on this day, on this Palm Sunday, thinking of this most holy week that is upon us, to living into the greatest story ever told. Help us to find our spot within it. Reach out to us in new ways to help us uh, live this incredible promise of your sacrificial love. Help us to be a part of the new life that is promised. And help us also to do some reflecting on our own, our own brokenness, our own sinfulness. Help us to turn around, to have a new frame of mind, to think newly again and lead us forward. This has been a year of, of exile and loneliness, and yet it has also been a time of exodus to a new land. Show it to us. Show us your hope as we continue to live into your promises and remind us always that you love us and that you call us forward. We take time now just to name those people among us who especially need your care and comforting touch. Bring healing among us as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as you forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, we wanted to take a moment to invite you into the things that are happening for Holy Week. So um, obviously we have online church uh, here with you this morning on Palm Sunday along with uh, nine o'clock inside the space at church and 10 o'clock in the outdoor chapel. Uh, you want to tell us about the prayer walk? Sure. So from Thursday through Sunday, um, you are invited to come down to the Memorial Chapel and uh, just have some quiet time. There'll be some stations that you can uh, stop at throughout the Memorial Garden and uh, pray, have some contemplation time, and um, anytime during sunup to sundown, I suppose, whenever you'd like to come. So that's open um, whenever you would like. 
We'll have an inside service on Monday, Thursday at 6.30 and also an inside service on Good Friday, also at 6.30. So we'll be doing that on uh, these holy days. And then on Easter Sunday, we've got seven o'clock down at the beach with our friends over at First Church Congregational. So it's fun to be able to do that again together. Mm -hmm. uh, nice and spread out, of course, and masked and all those things. Uh, and also we'll have an inside service at St. Paul at nine o'clock and outside in the outdoor chapel to celebrate Easter on uh, at, at 10 o'clock as well. 10 so, Dress warm. so that'll be great. So uh, we're in the midst of Holy Week. So uh, there you go. There you go. All right. I don't trust myself. Hi chickens, we'll stay inside. Oh, it's exciting. Hey everybody, it's, da oh hi girls. This is fun stuff. They love their corn. They love their corn. Here you go chickens. Ooh, they're all on one side. That's always interesting. One, two, three, four, five. Who's not laying? Instead of saying who's not laying, I should say thank you to the five of you who did lay for us today. That's very generous of you. We will enjoy these eggs. And thanks to you, uh, friends and members of St. Paul, for how generous you are. Uh, remember that you can um, give whether in person or through your bank account or right here on the website. There's they crazy. That, they love when that door's open, don't they? <laughs> There's craziness going on right here. Thank you very much for everything. Side note: I would like to say thank you for um, you know all the crazy things I ask you to do, and uh, very generously, there are already three crosses ready to go this week. Um, I know people are excited to make some posters for in front of um, church for Easter morning to share with our neighbors. And uh, there you go. And so um, this is my chance to say thank you. That is, that is chicken for thank you. <laughs> Let us ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure. Through a world that would deceive us, and to sin our spirit lure Onward in his footsteps Trending travelers hear our home above Full of faith and hope and love Let us to our Savior's bidding Faithful Lord with me abide I shall follow Suffer here with Jesus and with patience bear our cross. Joy will follow all our sadness where he is, there is no loss. For today we sow no laughter, we shall reap celestial joy. All discomforts that annoy. Shall give way to mirth hereafter, Jesus, here I share your woe. Help me there your joy to know. Let us gladly die with Jesus, since his death he conquered death. He will free us from destruction, give to us immortal breath. Let us mortify all passion that would lead us into sin, and the grave that shuts us in shall but prove the gate of heaven, Jesus, here with you. I die there to live with you on high. Let us also live with Jesus. He has risen.
risen from the dead, that to life we may awaken. Jesus, you are now our head. We are your own living members. Where you live, there we shall be. In your presence constantly. Hey, here we are. Hey, so this is the gazebo that is on the opposite end of the town green where we were earlier. And we just thought it was a fun place to sit and uh, yeah, hang out because it's, it's awesome here, right Jeff? It is, and this is my first time ever sitting in this gazebo. What? Get out of town. <laughs> and this is, this, is, this is what will happen. He'll go run a lap and come back and or maybe not. And so I'll just go and say that this is also probably he picked this spot because um, maybe, just maybe, the fire will, <laughs> will the fire alarm would go. That would be awesome. And you could just run from here to a fire. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be great. That'd be great. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Do you ever feel like you just want to start singing I am 16 going on 17 and start like running around the gazebo? Not once in my life. I feel like I want to do that right now. Mm. Maybe we'll do that after we stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for joining us on Palm Sunday. I believe we have extra palms that are available. So uh, certainly some people have came to church today uh, and got palms like you normally would. But if you're doing this in an online way, you would not have done that. But we'll have some extra ones. And if you want to swing by and pick up a palm, please do that. Yep, at our church. So, like, if you're in Wisconsin, just swing on by. Yes, Dad! Or, or, you totally can come pick them up. Or if you're in Florida, just, just come on over. Yeah, my Aunt Grace. I've got someone everywhere. We have enough palm. Yeah, or if you're in Minnesota, just by. <gasps> yes, the Holtz is the Scots. Bring it! Or if you're in New Hampshire, just come on down. Oh, the Cricks, Judy. There's lots of people. Absolutely. Anyway, or, <laughs> or, or not. <laughs> It's okay if you don't do that, but if you are local and you would like to pick up a palm and you did not get one because you were not at worship in the house or outside, uh, that is also A-OK. -okay. So come on, come on by, pick up a palm. Uh, one thing you can do is uh, save that palm throughout the year. And then, um, you know, this is the time we've got a lot of good things that are starting to happen as the weather is getting better, as more and more people are getting vaccinated. As the numbers keep coming down, as we're very hopeful about the direction of, of where things could potentially go in the coming months after this long year of pandemic. Um, but at the center of it is this story, uh, not just of celebration, but also just the, the, whole, the whole Jesus story and what it means to us. So uh, this, is, this is the week, friends. So uh, keep that palm and uh, remember it. Yeah. Or feel free to make it into a cute little cross. I never figured that out. Me neither. I don't do that. Yeah. All right. Well, we're just at the point of rambling, and I can tell Tammy really wants to get the sound of music going. So uh, we're going to wish you well and hope you have a great rest of your day. So peace be with you. So long. Farewell. I'll be it saying goodbye. Bye, friends. <laughs> All right, there you go. They're being really rude right now and not helping out at all with this. But um, because of you, things like this can happen with our chickens. Just kidding. Oh, I think that's Jeff back there. How far away did you run? 
Were you going to do a fire? Jeff was probably going to, on a fire call. But anyway, so here we... <laughs> Jeff was reenacting what it's like to be in a parade. <laughs> she said, go walk in. <laughs> so that's where I went. <laughs> I went by the flags. I was walking in. Well, let's try this again. You know, I was going to say, like, I go 